In this video, I want to go on a journey together, looking back at my first orc skin tutorial, and why it's still my favourite way of painting orc skin, and then we can create a new tutorial using what I've learnt since then. By the end, we should have a more in-depth tutorial showing you all the skills and techniques, including glazing, and how to highlight so you all have the confidence and knowledge to paint your own orc skin. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael, and it should be no secret to anyone now that I love painting orcs, and one of the first videos I did on the channel was an orc skin tutorial, and I now think it's about time we did an update. The original orc skin tutorial was made back in April 2021, and it was my third video released on the channel. I made the tutorial because I wanted to try and recreate how the Warhammer Studio paints their orc skin, and at the time there really wasn't any guide on how to do this. So that's why I thought I would give it a go. So I actually really like how I did this tutorial and how I painted the orc skin. But obviously as the years have gone by, I've improved my painting and my ability to make videos. So for me, this video does look quite dated, even though the actual orc and the way I painted it I'm still a massive fan of and it's still actually how I paint my own orcs. I want to show you in this video how I paint orc skin. Everyone knows orcs are the best and there's no end to the different ways you can paint their skin but I personally love the bright vibrant way that the Every Metal team have been painting their orc skin so I had a go at replicating it myself and I want to share with you how I do it in this video. You can see how awkward I am, I think, as well, because you have to remember I haven't really been in front of the camera before this. And as you can see, like three years ago, I've changed quite a lot. And even just the quality of my videos has improved. That's kind of why I wanted to update this video. These are the paints I'm going to use to paint the orc skin. I started with an undercoat of grey sear spray because I can get those lighter colours down first with a little effort. You can start from any colour undercoat you want though, the steps are still the same but you may have to paint more layers of your base green. So just a little bit of background information. So here you can see I've undercoated the orc knob grey sear but you can see sort of little flecks of green. Because I'd actually attempted to film this video before this but I obviously wasn't very happy with it I can't really actually remember painting and filming this that well but I do remember respraying this and having another go something that I didn't have in that tutorial and something I really like to do now it's talking about how to get your miniatures ready for painting in the tutorial I painted an orc knob but there has been some new orc boys since then so let's change it up and paint the skin of one of these newer orc boys. You can't really build these new orc boys in sub assemblies as they're push fit, but it shouldn't be too difficult to get to most areas to paint. I've also decided to use wraith bone to undercoat rather than the grey sear I used originally. Again, it's a personal choice and you should use whatever colour undercoat works best for you. Our orcs are now ready to paint, but before we get started, I do want to thank all my channel members and patrons who support the channel and have been a massive help in creating all the content and improvements I've made since starting this journey. If you want to also show your support, there's no better way than giving the content a like and leaving a comment. I really enjoy hearing about your own hobby. As well, throughout the tutorial, all the paints and brushes I use will be shown on the screen as I use them, and I'll also link them in the video's description along with any other equipment you see me using with affiliate links to where you can get them. So here's my orc skin mix. And I'll show you how to mix a part of it as well. To get the green tone I wanted for the orc skin, I had to mix my own colour. And after some experimenting, I settled on a Death Guard green and Flash Gitch yellow mix. So these are the two colours I chose. So here I'm using dropper bowls. I don't recommend doing dropper bowls. I've since replaced all of them. I use four parts Death Guard green to two parts Flash Gitch yellow. Just think four brush loads to two brush loads to make it simple. If you want to paint a whole army, just mix half a part of the flash gitch yellow with a full part of the death guard green. This is what I did, so now I know I have the right colour for all my orcs. 
For me, the game changer in this tutorial was the orc skin mix I created, which is my attempt at making a base colour to match the studio's orc skin. I didn't know the official recipe for the studio orc skin at the time, so I came up with a mix using one part flash gitch yellow with two parts death guard green. If you're interested in what the studio mix is, it's two parts Avalon Sunset mixed with three parts Garsnick Green. And I've also been known to use the Auric Flesh base colour as well in some of my tutorials. Here they all are together and all of these base colours create a great foundation for a nice vibrant lighter orc skin. And all the steps we're going to be doing in this video can be applied to all three. Something that hasn't changed is how important it is to learn the basics and how we apply paint to our miniatures. So here's something I do in my, this is something I've always kind of done in my tutorial since this video, is talk about how to apply paint to a miniature. So that's something I don't really want to change. But I do obviously elaborate a bit more these days than what I did. Something I used to do in my older videos as well is speed up the painting which I've realised now that I don't do anymore. I'm not sure why. Once you're happy with your green, paint all the orc skin in this colour. It's always a good idea to dilute your paint first and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. Keep your brush moving and try and avoid going over areas you've already painted and then leave it to dry. It's always better to paint multiple thin layers to avoid clogging up any detail on your miniature and it also gives you a stronger solid colour which you can then shade and highlight from. There's something else that's quite important from this video. This is where I really started to, well it's only, this was my third video. So you can see I already started to use split screens in my tutorials which I still do because it's a great tool for comparison and showing steps. The idea actually comes from painting tutorials in magazines where you'd see the still shots of each step. So I thought I'd kind of apply that same logic but in video form so you can sort of compare each step to each other and it's just a good visual teaching tool. To make sure we achieve best results when painting our miniatures we can't overlook the basics starting with thinning your paints and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. As well I like to remove some of the paint from the brush on some paper towel first giving us more control over how much paint is deposited. And when you're ready make sure to keep your brush moving and try not to go over any area you've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And after you're done covering an area because we thinned our paint you'll notice it hasn't covered very well but that's okay as we can repeat the process and paint another layer. We want to paint in multiple thin layers to build up to a solid colour without losing any details on our miniatures. Just make sure to let each layer completely dry before painting another one. When we're painting our base colours, we always want to work up to a solid colour. This is going to give us a great foundation and any shading, highlighting and glazing we do after this will contrast better. Now that we have a strong green colour for the skin, we want to give it some definition. So I'll start off by giving the skin a soft shade. I mix bell tan green with twice the amount of Lamy medium to create a wash. This is going to weaken the strength of the colour so you can still get that strong vibrant green coming through. For the orc skin using bell tan green and in the video I have used Lamy medium. And one thing I do want to point out is maybe the lighting. So all the equipment that I use in this tutorial I actually still use, it's just that I've learnt to use it better and I've learnt to sort of do better post production. You don't need to use a lot, just make sure you cover all the areas of the skin and once dried it will leave a nice soft shade which helps the skin look more fleshy. Once that's fully dried the skin is going to need some more definition, so using Beltan Green just as it is, I use this to pick out the deeper areas of the skin to bring out the details even more. In the original tutorial, we created a wash to start creating our definition. We used Beltan Green and we used Lamy Medium to thin it down. This time though for our updated tutorial, let's use some water instead of the Lamy Medium. And we want a thin wash because we don't want our Beltan shade to be so strong, so it doesn't overpower our green base colour, losing its vibrancy. 
When you're applying a wash or a shade, we want to use enough to cover an area comfortably to avoid it pulling up too much in areas we don't want it to. If you see this happening, we can use our brush to soak up any excess we don't want. Then once the shade is dried, it's given us that definition without affecting our base colour too much. We want to continue in the same way using Beltan Green that isn't thinned down to darken the more deeper recessed areas in the face and around the muscles helping to bring out these details even more. Using washes and shades are a great way to create definition especially for more organic features like flesh but they can make things look messy and they can even dull the colours they used over so we will have to spend some time tidying things up. At this stage you could go straight to highlighting if you wanted to but if you're like me and you're a bit messy you can use some of that base green colour to clean up any mistakes. Try not to overdo this step though, you don't want to cover up that soft shade you started with. To tidy things up we can use our base colour and so we don't completely cover up the different tones and definition we've already created, let's apply this as a glaze. To make a glaze we want to thin our paint which is going to be our base colour with twice the amount of water making it more transparent which allows more of the colours and tones on the layer underneath to come through. And even though our glaze is quite thin, we don't want to treat this like a wash. We want to apply a glaze in even thin layers. You really want to take your time with this step as rushing it, we can completely ruin the different tones the wash created in the flesh. To finish off the skin, I use Ogryn Camo to paint the highlights. You can see I went straight to using Ogryn Camo for a highlight. But how about instead we also make our Ogryn Camo a glaze and use it to lighten some areas even more. Again we don't want to overdo this, we want to be subtle with our Ogryn Camo glaze. Now we've learned about glazing and using washes, I want to move on to talking about highlighting. To finish off the skin I use Ogryn Camo to paint the highlights. And when doing this you don't want to have a lot of paint on your brush, this can create thick blobby lines. A smaller amount of paint is better and will also give you more control. So this is part of the video where I'm doing some highlighting and I don't really explain a lot about highlighting which again I, I do now in my more recent videos because the way I kind of approached videos previously were guides whereas now I kind of want to think of them as lessons and it's always good to sort of explain the technique and what you're doing and the ideas behind it. Take your time, you only need to pick out the more prominent edges as this is an organic surface. The idea behind highlighting is to bring out any edges, areas and raised details to draw our attention to them and to make these features stand out more. The most prominent way of highlighting and the one we most associate with it is the line highlight and it's this highlight that we're going to be focusing on. This technique is a great idea to have a brush you vibe with that you like to use and I would keep it separate so it's always up for the task when needed. Again we want to thin our paint and remove any excess on some paper towel first which is going to prevent those thick blobby lines. Then when you're ready let's use Creed Khaki to paint thin lines along edges and raise details to help draw attention to them and to help define the shape of things. I'm not doing a lot of highlights as you don't tend to get many hard edges on squishy fleshy areas so I'm really just picking out the obvious edges and details. If you need more help with highlighting and want to know how to get better at it I've got a dedicated video showing you how. For me highlighting is one of the most important techniques to learn and practice. Not only does it help to improve the look of our miniatures but it also helps us improve our brush control and hand eye coordination making us better miniature painters. We could stop here and say our orc skin is finished, but I do want to show you how we can make our orc skin look even better. I now want to show you how you can add a little bit of interest and colour by adding some flesh tones to areas of the skin using a glaze. To make the glaze, just add some water to some Cadian flesh tone until it's quite thin. This will make it more translucent, allowing the green to still show through. And this was my this doing this was actually my first kind of attempt at glazing. And it's quite a simple thing to do but it does add a lot of interest to the miniature so it's definitely something I want to keep. The idea is to treat this like painting still rather than like a wash. I like to glaze the tips of the ears, lower lips and you could even do the knuckles as well if you wanted to. And build it up slowly until you're happy with it. And finally to finish off use Screaming School to highlight these areas. 
To finish our orc skin we're going to add warmth and interest using a Kizla flesh glaze and the areas we want to glaze are the lower lip, ears and knuckles. Build the Kislev glaze up slowly in thin layers and finish these areas highlighting them using flayed one flesh. The orc skin is now finished and hopefully you can see how easy and quick it can be and still get some fantastic looking orcs. So overall actually the, the format of the videos that I make hasn't really changed a lot. It's just that the more sort of there's more information that I include in my tutorials now. And obviously the quality of the actual tutorials has improved. But for me the the sole purpose for me making these tutorials is to teach everyone how to paint miniatures. And as I say at the end of every video I always hope that I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge. So that's what's really important for me. And one of the things for making these videos that I didn't really think about was how quickly my own painting skills were going to improve. And that's just through a lot of painting and practicing and trying to figure things out so I can teach you guys. So it's not only you guys who are learning, it's also me. So we're on this journey together. And that's what I've really enjoyed throughout the past few years. But I'm really glad everyone's still enjoying my content and joining me on this journey. Really means a lot. I've wanted to create a newer version of the Orc Skin tutorial for a while now. But honestly, the way I painted the Orc Skin originally is still my preferred method. It has the same vibe and tones as the Studio Orc Skin, but done in a more achievable way that anyone can do. So let's see how it turned out. Before we see how our orc skin has turned out, I want to say a massive thank you to Vladimir Sharov, Nathan Pacer, Tim Wallman and Love Hippo, who have recently become supporters on the channel. Thank you so much. If you want to support the channel as well and the content I make, then you can do that by becoming a channel member or joining the Patreon. Both give you early access to tutorials and you'll be kept up to date with what I'm doing behind the scenes. Our orc skin is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to paint your own orc skin. And I know you'd want to see how the orc skin would look like using the other base colours. So here's the studio mix. And here's the orc skin painted using auric flesh. All using the same steps, just a different base colour. And you don't even need to choose one, you could do all of them if you wanted. Since I started the channel, I've done loads of tutorials showing you how to get your orcs painted, including more ways to paint orc skin, so I would love for you to go and check some of those out as well. I really love making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. Let me know by liking the video and leaving a comment. And make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content, and I'll see you in the next video.